the Stafford Voice. Profiles in History He was the Jay Leno or the Colbert of his time, writing many poems, songs, and satires. One of his more popular works was the song, The Battle of the Kegs, about an attempt to sink British ships at Philadelphia during the Revolutionary War by uh, floating explosive-filled barrels down the Delaware River. The British responded to the mines by shooting at anything that floated, and, well, he couldn't resist mocking the British as they bravely battled the barrels. Francis Hopkinson was born in Philadelphia on September 21st, 1737. He was in the first class to graduate from the College of Philadelphia in 1757. Receiving his master's in 1760 and later an honorary doctor in law in 1790. His interests and skills were all over the place. He wrote poems, satires, songs, and composed music. He even painted and drew cartoons, but none of that really paid the bills or put food on the table. In 1763, Hopkinson was appointed as customs collector for Salem, New Jersey. However, from May 1766 to August 67, he spent his time in England with the hopes of being commissioner of customs for North America. He was unsuccessful and returned back to New Jersey, operating a dry goods business. He married Anne Borden on September 1st, 1768, and together they had five children. They moved to Bordenton, New Jersey, in 1774, where he would become a member of the New Jersey Provincial Council and be admitted to the New Jersey Bar on May 8, 1775. After the New Jersey legislature imprisoned the royal governor, Hopkinson was picked at, uh, as part of the new delegation to the Continental Congress. His time there was short-lived. From June 22nd to November 30th, 1776, a lot had happened, including having voted for and uh, signing the Declaration of Independence. When he departed Congress, he did so to serve on the Navy Board at Philadelphia. The board reported to the Marine Committee, of which he was appointed to while in Congress, and he later became the Navy Board's chairman. In 78... He was treasurer of the Continental Loan Office. He would also be appointed as judge of the Admiralty Court of Pennsylvania in 1779 and reappointed in 80 and 87. Now, also during that year, he helped ratify the Constitution during the 1787 convention. Now, Washington nominated Hopkinson on September 24, 1789, as a federal circuit judge for United States District Court for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania. He was confirmed by the United States Senate um, and received commission on September 26. On November 10, Hopkinson opened court, the first operating court under the Constitution. Another first for Hopkinson one of which he was especially proud of, was the composition of the music for the first original American song put down on paper, titled, My Days Have Been So Wondrous Free. On May 9, 1791, the life of Francis Hopkinson was suddenly cut short at the age of 53 from an apoplectic seizure. The record of his life didn't end there, though. One of the biggest areas of debate while he was alive was his, contrib his contribution to the design of the flag of the United States, which Congress officially adopted the Stars and Stripes as the official uh, national flag on June 14, 1777. The resolution creating the flag came from the Continental Marine Committee, of which Hopkinson became a member in 76. Here's where the debate begins. Most of us have credited Betsy Ross. However, the journals of the Continental Congress support the idea as recognizing Hopkinson as the designer. 
He sent a letter, he even sent a letter requesting compensation from Congress on May 25th, 1780. Uh, at best, it was a, it was as comical as only Francis was known to be. He asked for uh, a quarter cask of the public wine as payment for not only designing the U.S. flag, but also for his contributions toward the uh, Great Seal of the United States and various others. After some bureaucratic back and forth that only Washington is known for today, Congress eventually settled on refusing payment for the reason that Hopkinson was already paid as a public servant as a member of Congress. Now, either way you look at it, Francis Hopkinson's humor and artistic talents have found their outlets in freedom and a flag that continues to fly. And that is this week's Profiles in History.